Good morning. Thank you. And thank you, President Frank. I want to um, congratulate your um, athletic director. I challenged him. Where is he? I know he's here. I know when we were coming back from uh, one of the games um, that I had challenged you to put up children's pictures up at the pit um, and to see if you would do it before uh, and MSU did. And I congratulate you because you did. Um, it, it, these are pictures of children who are in the custody of CYFD. Um, children whose parents' um, parental rights have been terminated and therefore they're up for adoption. Um, and wherever we can place these photographs of these children so that they can get adopted and find um, uh, forever families, um, it's really important for us to make sure that they don't age out of the system. And I see Dr. Couture is here as well and we celebrated a few days ago that they also are putting it um, placing those up in the Pan Am during the basketball season, but um, I, I, I did sort of pit the two of you against each other, <laughs> and it was great fun. <laughs> it is good to be here with all of you um, and to honor uh, and to welcome you to the University of New Mexico's Economic Development Conference. This event is the first of its kind and reflects a deep commitment from UNM and President Frank to evaluate the role of the university within the larger debate and framework of New Mexico's economy. And for that, I am thankful. It is not news to anyone in this room that we are facing challenging economic times. On the national level, unemployment continues to hover over 8%. Businesses have been forced to lay off workers. Families are doing more with less. An entrepreneurial boom has tapered off and a job market that once seemed vibrant and full of opportunity has dwindled, with jobs few and far between. Within this stagnant national economy, New Mexico has been forced to become more competitive because no longer are we competing within the state, rural versus urban, gas-producing sectors of the state versus the research and development community, no, in today's world, we are competing regionally, nationally, and globally. And to do that successfully, we need to come to terms with some tough realities. We need to evaluate the way we do business. Consider the policies we have in place, policies that can be the deciding factor when a company is determining where to relocate or open its doors for the very first time. Times like these require us to ask hard questions and sometimes uncomfortable questions of ourselves. One of those questions ought to be, does New Mexico have a welcome mat or a no trespassing sign out front? Do we encourage growth in our economic industries or do we throw up roadblocks, protecting the status quo arguing that the current tax structure is just the price one must pay for the privilege of doing business in New Mexico. My friends, we cannot afford to do this anymore. In order to turn the economy around in a lasting and authentic way, we have to get serious. And we have to call on all sectors, public, private, and nonprofit alike to do their part to make New Mexico competitive again. This is not a realization that only New Mexico has been forced to deal with. Arizona saw the writing on the wall and reduced its corporate income tax, recognizing that many businesses are scouring their books, looking for ways to cut the overhead, increase profitability, and keep their workforce employed. Logically, the most attractive way to do that is to reduce the cost of operating in the state. We must also get creative by identifying innovative ways to leverage existing resources and form partnerships that sharpen our competitive edge. In New Mexico, we're blessed with a number of higher education institutions. Specifically, 
We are home to three research universities, the University of New Mexico, New Mexico State, and New Mexico Tech. The United States is a world leader in higher education, healthcare delivery, basic research, and venture capital investment. So what better way to draw on these strengths than to link our local economy to the institutions that produce the state's most qualified and trained workforce? Consider this. In 1959, six local business leaders were hanging out in a clubhouse after they were rained out of their golf game. They were complaining about sending their kids to college only for them to learn to earn a degree and to then leave their state because they weren't there weren't enough employment, there wasn't enough employment within their state of, South Carol of North Carolina in Raleigh. From that simple conversation, an idea was born. And as a result of this vision, the research triangle in North Carolina is now the largest high-tech research park in North America. It employs nearly 40,000 people, is home of to 157 companies, and sits on 4,600 acres. That is the kind of innovative, out-of-the-box brainstorming we need, and it doesn't need to come from outside the university system. It can come from within the system. Just think, a university advancing educational training and research breakthroughs, then transferring the knowledge from the campus to the community through the development of commercial applications and products. At the river, and the reverse is true. If the educational base of a community isn't elevated, and by that I mean a community's workforce is not becoming more qualified, then the workforce itself will hinder the community's ability to land technology-based jobs. So you see, in New Mexico's universities, they produce highly skilled graduates feeding into a well-trained workforce. That workforce will enhance the state's ability to attract new jobs and opportunities within the research and development sector. For this to happen, we don't need to reinvent the wheel. We are fortunate here in New Mexico to have two world-class research laboratories, Los Alamos and Sandia. We should evaluate where the relationships between these labs and our universities should and can be strengthened. We have already seen how effective these partnerships have been. Sandia and UNM led the effort to destroy cancer with its use of nanoparticles to blast cancer cells. And UNM and Sandia even signed an MOU to increase cooperation between the two institutions. But let's multiply this effort. Let no opportunity go unexplored. Let's maximize the investment and capitalize on the intellect of our graduates and the innovative application of their talents that are here in New Mexico. I encourage you to meet with your partners, with these partners in particular, and identify new ones. Start a dialogue as to what more can be done to generate a workforce that will fit the needs of their work at the labs. Put this research to work. Develop new ideas, and then help deploy those ideas and turn them into a marketable product or service. And while it may make the most sense for some of our institutions to join forces with a research ent entity, for others there may be different opportunities to achieve the same goal of training a qualified, prepared, and desirable workforce. I was just in Farmington last month, celebrating the long-standing and successful collaboration between San Juan College and British Petroleum America. BP was there to invest $4 million in the college's School of Energy. For years, San Juan College has been closely aligned with BP as it developed curriculum and training programs to meet growing workforce needs related specifically 
to the San Juan Basin and other energy production needs in North America. The School of Energy is now where BP sends its existing employees to receive additional technical training, to prepare these techs and to make sure they have the proper training and resources they need to operate safely and reliably. That is a partnership. As a result of this partnership, the San Juan College of School of Energy has become the top recruiting destination for BP. This is a perfect example of what we can accomplish when our educational institutions partner with local job creators. And as the University of New Mexico looks for similar opportunities, the most basic and essential encouragement I can give is this. Every diploma that bears your stamp, make it mean something. Strive to become better educators. Take personal responsibility to see it that this school is releasing a highly qualified, skilled workforce, unrivaled and unmatched in the region. Now, I recognize that there are some hurdles that we need to overcome if you are to reach this goal. First, we need to improve the academic performance level of New Mexico high school graduates. For you to maximize an incoming student's potential, we need to send you students who are competent and prepared. I understand that not all kids respond the same to um, learning, to the same learning environment, but there has been um, a standard of achievement when they advance to the university level. Ensuring this helps our students tackle more advanced material that they will need to master. It upholds the integrity of our institutions, of higher learning, and it even saves taxpayers' money. Right now, New Mexico spends $27 million every year in remediation costs. Those are dollars spent because the children coming into the university are not prepared to be a freshman in college. To teach a child what he or she already should have learned between the grades of K through 12. Of course, this is a problem we need to address before a high school graduate enters the university. Meaningful intervention needs to occur as they are progressing from kindergarten through the 12th grade. That is why reforming our education system is so important. Make no mistake, failure to reform our schools is not something that only affects our younger students. It is an epidemic that gone untreated will not um, improve on its own. It will have a domino effect. I believe it was Albert Einstein who defined insanity as doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. And that's what we have done for many years within our educational system K through 12. To raise the bar to help our kids succeed in life, we need to ensure that our kids at the earliest levels are mastering the basics, reading, writing, and arithmetic. Instead of ignoring the signs and handing them off for someone else to deal with when we see them struggling. This isn't just my opinion. It is a majority of New Mexicans who also share this same sense of urgency. Another way we produce better college applicants is to guarantee that in their formative years, they are being taught by the best and the brightest. To elevate our effectiveness in this area, I believe we need to put in place mechanisms and incentives to reward, retain, and attract outstanding teachers. In addition to committing to reform the K through 12 system, the state can also work with our research institutions to place a proper emphasis on deliverables. I remember sitting with a legislator once. We were talking about, a couple of sessions ago, we were talking about reading and how our children have to read by the time they leave the third grade. Because they learn to read from kindergarten to the third grade, and then they read to learn for the rest of their life. 
and an unbelievable comment was made. The comment was, that is an unfunded mandate. I thought that's what we were paying teachers to do from K through three, is to teach children how to read and write and do arithmetic. So to hear that it was an unfunded mandate was amazing to me. I am committed to the reforms that New Mexicans are demanding. We can do this by basing our funding formula or the system through which our institutes uh, are of higher learning receive funding from the state. Another change that needs to take place, because right now, the funding formula is based on square footage. How many buildings do you have? Um, I, I thought that was amazing. It was something I learned uh, recently, that we pay by the square footage. When we should actually have a funding formula from the state on outputs that we can quantify and by which we can gauge our success. This is a shift from the old way of thinking that an institution should receive a dollar amount based on the square footage of its facility instead of the effectiveness of its programs. I don't believe that it is, prudent, it is a prudent way to spend taxpayer dollars. Neither is it a good way to elevate the reputation of our universities. Instead, my administration is pushing to have a greater percentage of the money that flows to New Mexico's colleges and universities tied to the end product. This includes graduation rates and incentives for institutes whose graduates earn degrees in the STEM or science, technology, engineering, healthcare, and mathematic disciplines. President John Quincy Adams, also a professor of Harvard and Brown, stated, if your actions inspire others to dream more, learn more, do more, and become more, you are a leader. So as you hear from today's outstanding speakers, I challenge you to be listening and to ask yourselves, how best can I lead? How best can this university maximize its human and research capital? How do we leverage that capital to increase the effectiveness of existing partnerships with the labs, your immediate community, and New Mexico as a whole? All for one single purpose, to create more jobs, to give our kids employment opportunities, to return home, and to create the infrastructure and environment to put more New Mexicans back to work. Let's think boldly. We've seen the possibilities from Raleigh, North Carolina to Farmington, New Mexico. I believe that even greater opportunities lie ahead. So I look forward to working alongside all of you, like those six businesses or those six business leaders who were out, you know, uh, sitting under a porch waiting for the rain to stop while their game of golf had been interrupted, to pull our resources and our ideas together to make dreams become a reality. New Mexico truly is a gem. We don't deserve to be the bottom of the bad list and the top, be at the bottom of the good list and the bottom, at the top of the bad list. We really don't. We are a gem. We have so much with our laboratories and our universities that we should be leaders in the country. And for that, I challenge you and I thank you for all the efforts that you have put to make sure that our universities are improving every day. Thank you for inviting me today to speak to you. I am looking forward to hearing as to what takes place throughout the day. I unfortunately, I'm going to go um, in a little bit to uh, see the junior livestock um, sales that takes place, because sometimes I encourage people to keep raising their hand um, so that the kids can get uh, greater contributions or uh, for the uh, livestock that they have prepared and, and groomed and taken care of all year long. I think that's one of the best parts of my job is visiting students in their classroom and also going to that junior livestock. Yesterday I was at a school, um, Kirtland Elementary School. And this is once again thinking outside of the box and making education fun. They have a garden. 
they take the kids out there, they plant the seeds, and they have a garden. They grow chili, they grow um, all kinds of vegetables. Um, you saw this little third grader come up with a squash, and he says, look what I grew, this is what I planted. And then they go inside the classroom, and they then cut up the different kinds of food. They learn uh, from fruits and vegetables and what it contains and proteins, etc. And then they have a tasting contest. And then they have to describe what, they, what it feels like and tastes like. And one of the funny stories that I heard yesterday when they were tasting avocado. Some kids had never tasted an avocado. And one of them said it tastes like an egg. I've never heard it described that way. But it was very funny how they really were engaged in watching their vegetables grow, bringing those vegetables into the classroom, teacher talking about what um, proteins and vitamins, et cetera, that the vegetable has, and then tasting it, and then cooking, and measuring, learning how to measure um, you know, teaspoons and uh, half a cup, et cetera, et cetera, in order to make in these foods that they're going to feed their children. And so I think that teacher, I mean, it was amazing to watch her in action. It was amazing how engaged those children were. Those are the ones that we want to elevate. Those are the ones that are real leaders in our K through 12 system. And those are the ones who are going to produce children that will be prepared for your institutions to bring those ideas on how we partner with the community or in our labs and other private companies so that New Mexico becomes the best that it can be, the best that we know it can be. Because together, we do make up the best of New Mexico. I appreciate you asking me to be here. Thank you very much. And please enjoy your conference today. God bless.